everyone. Welcome back to The Physical Educator. Today we're going to talk about carbohydrate and fat metabolism. We're going to start as we normally do with the assessment objectives. A short unit, not many keywords to grasp, state, outline and explain are the only three key terms used within this section with only two of the specification points requiring an explanation. So therefore for the other areas it's just a case of understanding the key terms and being able to compare them to other key terms within this unit. Before we start, we're going to look at some key terms that are really important within this section. And the word lysis as a suffix means breakdown. So we've got three terms here. Glycolysis, which is the breakdown of glucose into pyruvates, and we'll learn that more during the energy systems. Glycogenolysis, which is the breakdown of glycogen into glucose, and lipolysis, which is the breakdown of fats into glucose. Then there's also genesis, and the word genesis means to build up, to produce. Glycogenesis is the conversion of glucose into glycogen for storage. So let's make sure that we understand these key terms before we go into this unit. So the first point we need to look at today are three key terms, metabolism, anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism, this is a little bit like building blocks. So what it's referring to is how smaller molecules are built together to create larger molecules. So an example of this is when glucose is stored as glycogen within our body. That is an example of an anabolic reaction. Catabolism, the opposite. It's large molecules being broken down into small molecules. So every time in this section and in the nutrition section, you see the word lysis, that's referring to a breakdown. So lipolysis, glycogenolysis, glycolysis, all of these processes are catabolic processes because they are breaking down a larger molecule into a simple molecule. We can do this with oxygen, so it's aerobic catabolism, or anaerobically without oxygen, and it's anaerobic catabolism. Both of these processes are what make up our metabolism, and the metabolism is all the biochemical reactions that take place within the human body. It's a term that we're used to hearing, but having a fast metabolism means you can burn the calories off. All that means is that these biochemical reactions take place within the body, you can speed and slow up this process. The next two points are looking at glycogen storage and triglyceride storage and where it is within the body. So firstly, what is glycogen? Glycogen is stored glucose, combined together with another glucose molecule to make a disaccharide via the condensation reaction. Once this keeps happening again and again and again, we get a polysaccharide and these chains can be up to 60,000 glucose molecules in a glycogen molecule and we store this in our liver and in our muscle. The triglyceride storage slightly different. Triglyceride storage is in the adipose tissue, so in your fat cells and in the muscle itself. So again, unused glycogen can be transferred into triglyceride storage as well as fats that we eat within our diet. In the nutrition video, we spoke about the condensation reaction. Here we need to explain the role of insulin in the formation of glycogen and the accumulation of body fat. So when we eat food, our blood glucose levels increase, particularly after eating a carbohydrate-rich meal. Insulin is released by beta cells in the pancreas, and this insulin goes to the blood. When the insulin is in the blood, it travels around the body to the body cells that are requiring glucose, and it tells the cells to open up in layman's terms, and that glucose can then diffuse from the bloodstream into the cells that require the glucose for respiration. As we know, this is what a glucose molecule looks like. And when two glucose molecules combine together, we have a glycosidic bond making the condensation reaction and forming a disaccharide. This can be a long chain of polysaccharide if this continues. And this excess glucose is stored as glycogen in the muscle and in the liver, as we've already explained. When the glycogen is stored, it is in reserve for up to 10 hours. Any excess or unused glycogen can be stored as triglycerides in the adipose tissue or in the skeletal muscle. When insulin is present, it also inhibits lipolysis, which is the breakdown of fats, which is not good if you're on a high-fat, low-carb diet. 
meaning that fats is gonna be a lot of your energy, but then you might have a cheat meal, you might have some chocolate or you might have some chips, then the insulin's gonna be present in your blood, therefore all that fat that you've got thinking it's gonna burn your energy isn't gonna burn your energy, it's actually gonna sit there and store as fat. So that's why you've got to be careful with your diet. And this is the simple relationship between insulin and how it can inhibit lipolysis. Next, we need to explore two key terms, glycogenolysis and lipolysis. So when we look at these key words, lysis, like I've already explained, means breakdown. Breaking down is a catabolic reaction. Glycogen, we know that is stored glucose and lipids is the correct terminology for fats. So with that knowledge of key terms, let's go and look at some of these words to make sense of them. Glycogenolysis looks a difficult word of face value, but break it up, glycogen and lysis. It's the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. It's different from glycolysis because glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose during respiration to create energy. Lipolysis, lipo, lipids and lysis, it's the breakdown of fats into glucose when the fats are required so either low intensity exercise secondary source of energy lipolysis happens and it's the breakdown of lipids like we've said unless insulin is present in the blood therefore lipolysis will be reduced and inhibited we now need to look at glucagon and adrenaline and their role when we fast and when we exercise so we're going to start with glucagon now after a period of fasting the blood glucose levels will drop. Obviously, we have less sugar within our blood. Glucagon is a hormone that is released by the pancreas to stimulate glycogenolysis. So glucagon's job is to release the glucose that's stored as glycogen in the liver and to enable that in the blood so therefore we can get it to the cells, get it to where it's needed for respiration to still take place. During exercise, it's a similar process really. You know, glucose is used to release energy as part of aerobic respiration. However, during exercise, glucose levels in the blood drop and we'll come to how that happens shortly. Again, glucagon is the hormone that's released from the pancreas to stimulate the process of glycogenolysis, which accelerates the conversion of glycogen to glucose in the liver. So it does a similar job just for different reasons. Whereas adrenaline, again, during a period of fasting, the blood glucose levels will drop. We've explained that already. Adrenaline is released as part of the sympathetic nervous system. This also accelerates the conversion of glycogen to glucose in the liver. Similar job to glucagon. During exercise, there is an increased demand for glucose within skeletal muscles for respiration to take place. Adrenaline is released and this accelerates the conversion of glycogen to glucose in the liver. As you can see, these responses are quite repetitive, but I've done that for a reason for you. Your question might be glucagon and fasting, glucagon and exercise, adrenaline and fasting, or it might be comparing them. So I've put it in a simple box for you, and you can learn these as answers. So my recommendation is to pause the video, jot this down in your notes, so you've got a nice three-leveled answer for any one of them four combinations. And finally, we need to look at the role of insulin and muscle contraction on the uptake of glucose during exercise. So when we exercise, there's a demand for glucose to allow respiration to take place. Insulin and muscle contraction both stimulate the uptake of glucose from the blood into the body cells. However, insulin levels decrease to allow an increase in glycogenolysis this is because when we exercise, particularly strenuous exercise, the primary provider of glucose is coming from our stored glucose within our liver. With that said, blood glucose diffusion obviously still occurs because that's how the glucose gets into the muscle. But the primary source of this glucose is coming from the stored glycogen within our liver. As insulin levels fall, Glucagon and adrenaline levels increase, which we've already looked at, means that there's more glycogenolysis, releasing more glucose from the glycogen stores, and less glucose is stored within the liver, more is used for respiration. And that is the process of insulin and muscle contraction affecting the uptake of glucose during exercise. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you're a teacher looking for teaching resources, you can visit the Physical Educator Tez channel and you can pick up 
all of Unit 3 resources in there. Good luck with your studies. See you again soon.